Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be doing another live tour review on Amuro Namiese's tour, Concentration 20. This one was held at the Tokyo Dome and this was back in 1997. The Dome didn't actually open until I believe it was March 17th of 1988. So almost nine years later, about ten years almost, and she's performing a solo live at the Tokyo Dome. So that's kind of a big deal as a female solo artist in Japan. So regardless, guys, I'm really excited to go through this one with you. I don't think I've ever seen anyone else review this album on YouTube before, so maybe this will be the first. But regardless, I'm just excited to go through it because this is a very different tour, even very different from her last one. So let's go ahead and get started and not waste any more time. So the show first starts off with an opening just like her previous live her in her first anniversary. And this one I do like as well because, again, it showcases some brief behind-the-scene looks into what's going on and you can see Namie and her band getting ready for the show and you can also see all the crowd all the people just filing into the Tokyo Dome and they show them all like Namie and her band members all standing in a circle and they're praying they say a prayer and it's kind of interesting because I didn't really I don't know if Namie is religious at all I don't know anything about that so but I it does look like most of her band members are from America so I don't know if that has anything to do with it but Regardless, I just thought it was really cool because, again, those scenes are so priceless because we get so few of them from Namie. So, really good way to open up the tour. So, the show actually opens up where you can start hearing the music and the beat from the song, Close Your Eyes Close to You. And it's set up, the stage is set up like a giant like fashion runway. So, there's just this big aisle coming down the center towards the crowd. And you start seeing, I'm assuming they're the dancers coming up and they're in these black and blue outfits and they're just doing catwalk strutting, like they're fashion models. And it goes great with the beat of the song, guys. Like it, it literally works for dun, 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 dun. And they're just, you know, doing their attitude walks up there. And I love the way that they have on the stage in the back, they've got these big draping curtains on the back, which makes it look really cool. Like it is an actual like fashion runway, something you would see on TV. So I thought that that was a really nice touch. So Namie makes her appearance. She comes down from the catwalk that's extending out towards the crowd. She pops up from there and immediately starts right into the song. And there's not really like dancing in this song. It's more of her just Namie walking around with an attitude, but it still really works because the beat is just perfect for it. And you can just see Namie, she's keeping a more serious face for the intro because as a fashion model, if you're doing a runway, you're supposed to have like pretty, you know, mellow face. I guess not mellow, but like, I guess more attitude strict, like serious face. And so she comes out with this blue top on with some black accents and she's got black shorts and black boots. But then it's like, there's like a see-through black long dress thing around her, but it looks great on her. I think it looks really well. And of course it goes with all of her dancers who are dressed up as fashion models with the same kind of color scheme. And the guys come up in this dance or during the song and they've got just black suits on and oh my gosh guys there's this one male dancer that i could not stop staring at because <laughs> he's got like this super bowl cut hair like it's just like i yeah i couldn't help but laugh a little bit so <laughs> that was a little distracting for part of it but yeah just every time he moves it just pops up and down with them <laughs> i just have to say the 90s good times. Like I mentioned in my Concentration 20 album review, I'm not like a huge fan of this song. Like it's hard for me to just listen to it because it's not, I don't know, like I can't picture anything that's going on in my mind when I listen to this. It's just a song. But when I watch it live, it's really entertaining because, oh, well, they're doing it like a fashion show and it makes more sense to me. And so I don't know. I, I did enjoy this live performance. So after this song ends, we go into I Was a Fool. Now this was a song that was from her Sweet 19 Blues album, so we've already seen her perform this song once. So this the choreography pretty much didn't really change, and I have to say, like, it's not a bad performance of this, but I do prefer the Sweet 19 Blues one more, I think more just because they had like, you know, it said bar 19, and I, I just felt like it had more of a scene, and it kind of melded better than just coming right after this song, where we were going from like a fashion show to then just suddenly this. And so it, it was still good, the dancing subtle, just like it was in the, the, her first anniversary tour. But she just has two male dancers with her. And of course, one of the male dancers is bowl cut hair man over here. And so, gosh, I was so distracted just watching him. Like, not me, she's mostly singing and doing a little bit of dancing. And mostly the guys are doing the dancing. But 
gosh, again, I just kept watching his hair float and lift up, so yeah. Maybe you guys will know what I'm talking about if you watch this tour. But it, it was an all right performance, it's just not my favorite. Then we go into the performance of Private. It's really <laughs> humorous in a sense how it's like Namie started this tour off with like some of my least favorite songs. And so at least close your eyes close to you was more enjoyable for me because I do like that song more than Private. But yeah, this song was just... I mean, the choreography is basically the same as her Sweet 19 Blues. I prefer that original performance more. Like this one's okay. It's all the same. The only thing I like that was a little bit different is how from behind her, the there's like a staircase and her dancers like come up from the bottom up onto the stage. And so they come out like this, like an Egyptian theme. And I mean, it does work with it. It's, it's all right. I like to see it live more than I like to listen to this song, but yeah, needless to say, I was happy when it was over. <laughs> so after this song ends, we go into a brief interlude. And this interlude is a little bit different. It shows Namie, and it, I'm assuming they were like interviewing her. And it's in black and white, and you just hear, you don't hear them asking questions, but it's Namie, and she's just talking to the camera. And I've only, I only understand like a little bit of it, but I really wish somebody would go through it and totally translate all of it so I can know what she's saying. Because again, it's a brief behind the scenes moment of something that we like never get to see from Namie. So it was, I thought it was really nice. So after this interlude happens, then Namie enters back onto the stage and she is singing Don't Wanna Cry. So we all know this is a classic and she has an outfit change, also need to mention. And so she's got this white pantsuit kind of outfit. So like a white long dress jacket with white pants. And it looks so cute on her. She looks so thin and like her legs just look so long. <laughs> but she looks adorable. And of course the song is amazing. And so I don't really have anything bad to say about this performance because I just like the song and she's just smiling. She looks so happy and excited and the crowd singing with her. So really good performance. I also forgot to mention that right before she starts singing Don't Wanna Cry, she has like a brief little MC with the audience and kind of talks to him for a second, which is something that she definitely does not do later on in her career. So I also liked that aspect of this. Number six is A Walk in the Park. And so this performance I thought was really good. It was super cute and it just really reminds me of the music video for this song because of the pantsuit kind of thing that she's wearing. And so during this song, she'll, she runs back and forth on to the opposite sides of the stage to get closer to the crowd. And at some point when she's walking back from one side, she just starts laughing and she has to pull her microphone down and just stop singing. And then she starts to sing again and then she starts laughing and has to pull it down. So I don't know what happened. Maybe, I don't know the lyrics well enough to know if she maybe said the wrong line or if something just happened that she noticed and a few other people on stage. So I don't really know, but it's really funny and adorable. And of course the crowd loves it because it's just, I don't know, it's just so real. Number seven is No Communication. Now I really do like this song because it's got more of like a, a positive summer kind of vibe. And so she's still in the same outfit and her dancers though, they come out in these like colorful like mini skirts and tops and so they're all doing a little dance the best part of the song of course is when it breaks down to the no communication to communicate and they do the little like step dance slide thing yeah, i think it looks really cool so nami does a really good job on this performance and did this the point which i was very pleased with and then nami eventually she goes off stage and the dancers stay on so you can assume she's going to go have an outfit change and the dancers like they go off stage for a second and then they come back and now they've just got like bras on and like these long colorful dresses and they dance for a second while they're like twirling their suit jacket tops that are the same color and then they end up putting those on and they end up taking off the long dresses and they just have like these black shorts and they have chairs and they start doing some like chair dance to like just the instrumentals of no communication which was kind of interesting because I associated chair dance as something that's like more sexy but I don't know it worked and it was still entertaining and good. Then we go into Storm and this is one of my favorite tracks off the Concentration 20 album and so I loved how she, she comes out in like this black top and a black mini skirt with her black boots and so I liked the feel of how this darker song goes with these darker type of clothes and I just love the rapping of this song like the way she raps and everything like it just flows so well it's just like it just I can't explain it I just think it sounds awesome 
And it's kind of funny how like she'll be like storm, da 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 da, da storm. But sometimes when she says storm, she'll like do a little like hit for us <laughs> or some of it. But it was a really good performance, and I really did like this song, so I was very pleased. Number nine is Concentration 20. So this is the song the album is named after. So Concentration 20, Make You All Right. And I love this performance. Like she killed this performance. It starts off already with a good dance and the dance just gets better as it goes. So it's like probably the song that has like the most dancing as of this point in the tour. And it's just awesome and I just love it. It's got like that dark vibe to it, but sexy at the same time. And the, like, I cannot compliment the choreography enough. Like it's just really good. So this is definitely one of my top favorite in the performances for this actual tour. So definitely watch this one guys. If you see any part of this tour, at least watch this one. Now she goes into Sweet 19 Blues, but there was a brief costume change. So she's got a black dress on with like these little red roses all over it and they kind of like pop out. And so Sweet 19 Blues, total classic song, beautiful, love it. So I don't have anything bad to say about it. She sings it and it sounds fantastic. 11 is Be With You or Be With You. And she did a really great job with this song. Before it starts, she has like a little brief MC kind of introducing the song and then she starts to sing it. Her vocals were really strong in this song, so I really did like that. And I love the instrumentals that are at the start of it. The do -do 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 -do. I'm probably doing a horrible job imitating that. But I, I like the beginning sounds that are there in that song. So this was a really great performance on this one as well. Another interlude happens after Be With You and it's another glimpse of Namie where she's just talking. And I forgot to mention that in this like interview and the interludes where Namie is talking, like she's got super short hair and I've like never seen her with short hair. Like I've always known her to have super long hair. So it just kind of threw me off, but she still looks super cute. And she just looks so young. She's just a little baby. And so after this happens in the interlude, when it comes back to the stage, the band starts having an introduction. So they start introducing all the different band members. And a lot of them, like I mentioned before, they're all from, a lot of them are from America and all of that. So they just have a very good diverse band. And I really like that. I think that's really unique and cool. So then you hear them starting to go into the sound for the song Body Feels Exit. So you you know what's coming. And Nami, she shows up on stage and it's, pretty much a similar outfit to what she started off in that first anniversary live in 1996, her previous live. That one she came out originally at the start of the tour in like this outfit that had black pants, a black skirt on top, and like a black top. It's basically that same exact type of outfit. So she comes out to perform this song. Of course, it's another classic song. I love the dance. I've mentioned this before. I think it's a fantastic dance. And the song is amazing and catchy. Like. I just, yeah, I can't compliment enough, but I will say they used the Latin house mix for this version of the song, which I do not like on the album, listening to it, the original so much better. And I think if you remember in my review for the um, Sweet 19 Blues album, it's because the previous song is like 10 minutes long and then it goes into Body Feels Exit with this Latin house mix and like literally it just kept going, body feels, body feels, and it drove me insane. So thankfully they don't do that in this one, but the whole time they're doing this whole intro introduction part with those sounds, you're watching all the dancers get introduced and they're like, it's more entertaining because I'm watching something. I'm not just listening to this constant sound. So it's the only time that I will forgive them for using this version. <laughs> now we've come to number 13, which is one of my favorite songs, Whisper. And I was so excited for this performance. You know, I love this song. And she did not disappoint me with the dance for this. I thought it was just great. And it was like her and all her girl dancers just dancing together, doing these little like hit things. And it just, it was fantastic. And she definitely did it justice. So I was not disappointed in any way. The choreography was really good. So again, definitely one of my top favorites. 14 is Chase the Chance. Again, don't really have much to say. She's already sung the song before. Choreography is basically the same. It's fun to see the crowd go chance, chance, chance with her. And other than that, I mean, it was still good. Number 15 is How to Be a Girl. And she comes out again, another outfit change. So she's just got the black pants on. And this time it's like a long black trench coat with these yellow accents. But the shape and the way that they have the coat, like it looks fantastic on her. Like 
It suits her figure so well, and I think it might actually be my favorite outfit from the whole live. I don't, I don't know, I just think it looks really good, and with this song, like, she gives such a good attitude walk when she's singing the, I don't know how to know, like, you know, she's just good attitude, the dance is really good, and it looks great, like, when she's doing the dance moves, how the coat just, like, flows with her, I think it looks really awesome. And so at one point during the song, like she, 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 blah, blah, she sings the chorus and then it pauses, like all the music goes silent and her and the dancers are just standing there like this and it's silence and you just hear the crowd like, yay, yay, just yelling at her. And after like, I don't know, it's probably like 10, 15 seconds, then the music comes back on and then she sings the chorus again one more time. And at the end of the song, she starts saying, I don't know. And so you know, like, pretty much this is the end of the show, and we're going to go into the encore next. So after the song ends, we go into another interlude, again, showing Namie talking. And so when this scene ends, we go into the song, Let's Do the Motion. So again, this is a song that was off of the Sweet 19 Blues album, and Namie comes out with another outfit change. Now she has white pants and just a plain black trench coat. And... I like this song and I do like the dance and the performance for this song, but I felt like it was kind of out of place. Like I felt they should have put this song maybe like after How To Be, like obviously it's still after How To Be A Girl, but like before the interlude. So do How To Be A Girl, this song, and then the interlude to go into the actual encore just because I don't know, it's more of like a dance song. And then just, I felt like it was weird to wear the trench coat again when you just were wearing when you might as well just kept wearing it. So I don't know if that was my opinion, but it was still a good performance. 17 is where we go into the song, You Are My Sunshine. So again, another Namie song, pretty much all of us know. And so she takes off the black trench coat for this performance. And so she's got her white pants and like this, like a white kind of lace see-through tank top. Like it's not necessarily see-through, but like there's holes kind of in the, throughout the shirt with like a flower pattern. And so they use the, I believe it's the Hollywood mix for this song. And it works really well because for the encore, typically you want to keep it, you know, more positive and uplifting just because you're ending the tour. You don't want people to feel sad when it's over. So I thought that this was a good mix to use for it. And everybody's just having a good time. The crowd's excited. So it was a good performance. Number 18, guys, is where we go into Can You Celebrate? And oh, you know that this is going to be an, like an amazing performance. Everything about this part and the show was just, this whole live right here was worth it. Like it's beautiful and touching and emotional. Like everything about it is amazing. There's nothing bad about it. And there's parts during the song where you can just see Nami, like her eyes are tearing up and getting really watery. And um, then towards the end of the like final chorus, she just, she's just like pretty much screaming the song kind of at the end, but she's just crying and you can just see the tears coming and the crowd loves it. And it just, oh, it tugs at your heartstrings and just makes you want to go give her a hug. And gosh, it's such a beautiful song and it's just so amazing. And I just love it. It's definitely one of my top favorite Nami performances probably of all time, because again, you finally get to see like that true emotion coming out of Nami because like I said before, like in some of her later years like you just I don't know I don't feel like you really like, really get that emotion from her as much but well we can talk about that later when I get to those anyways guys this song was amazing the whole show comes to an end with the song me love peace and so I thought it was appropriate that they used the Hollywood mix of you're my sunshine and then they use me love peace for the end song because they kind of have the same like Caribbean type of sound and I really liked that. And it was a good song to put after Kenny Celebrate. You don't really want to end a tour with the song Kenny Celebrate. Because while it's beautiful, like it's kind of sad and depressing. So this is a great way to just bring it back up. And kind of like a chill, mellow song. And you can just see Nami smiling. She's so happy. Like, and I did it again. And the crowd's just happy and loving it. And so all of the band members, you know, all, this, all the dancers, they all come up on the stage in a line towards the end of the song and they all have their hands up and they all bow and it just you know she's yelling and she runs again to both sides of the stage and starts saying goodbye to everybody and while this is happening after that song has ended you hear Namie's like it's like a voiceover on top of the DVD like on top of the scene of what's happening and she's just talking I don't know what she's saying but and then it, I assume it's good. I'd like to know what she's saying. When Namie walks off the stage, you see a behind the scene look 
at what's going on back there. You see her come down the stairs and they're like, you did good, you did good, her band members. And then they all get into an elevator together at the end and they all start going, can you set up right? And then they all just go like this and the elevator door shuts. So I thought that that was kind of a cute way to end it to actually see like, oh, well, literally when she gets off stage, she just goes straight and does this kind of a thing. So overall, I have to say that I was actually impressed with this tour. You can definitely tell that Namie has matured a bit since her first anniversary in 1996, even just a year later, that things are just a little bit different for her. I also did notice through most of the tour, she had a gold band on her ring finger. So I don't know if like she was already engaged at the time to Sam from TRF. I'm not quite sure, but yeah, she had a ring. I just noticed that throughout the whole performance. And I, I think it's refreshing watching her earlier tours because she doesn't have quite as big of a discography yet. And so to know that she has such a limited amount of songs to sing, like you get to hear more of the songs that she never sings again later on. Like you never hear Let's Do the Motion again, or I Was a Fool, or anything like that. Like you, you hear Kenny Celebrate, Sweet 19 Blues, obviously Don't Wanna Cry, that type of thing. But like a lot of the other ones, like you just never hear them again. And so I think it's really refreshing to hear a totally new sound for Nami, because most people remember her for her, kind of her later stuff. I feel like a lot of people found her during that, like her play era. And so it's really nice to just hear this old Nami, like this original Nami, like this is how she was when she first started. So I thought it was a really good tour. I won't say that I like it more than the first anniversary because they're both just so different. The first anniversary is adorable because it's like your first look at like, she's just so excited. Like she's really going on her own as a solo artist and it's just, it's like a nostalgic kind of feeling in that one. And this one's just like refreshing in a sense, like I'm solo artist now, like this is how I'm gonna do it. And I mean, she still commands the stage and did a great job and the dancing was fantastic. Not as much dancing as she does later on, but still it was a, it was a good tour. I'm gonna show you guys the DVD. So this is the cover here and this is the back. So if you open it, you can just see kind of like how it's her, uh, this is the outfit she wore when she sang the song Storm. So the disc on the inside is just red like this. Dami Amuro, Concentration 20 Live in Tokyo Dome. This was the Obi. I did order this live off of uh, CD Japan. And so there is the cover to the booklet. We will open this up here. Let me move this out of the way. So there's that picture. So again, here it is. Same thing that's on the front and back there. So she looks really gorgeous there. I do really like her haircut during this tour that she has. So yeah, there she is. And so then we have this little thing here and we just unfold it. And it's basically just got like all the lyrics to all the different songs that she sings. And then it's just got some credits back here and then it just says, Nami Amaro Concentration 20 in Tokyo Dome. So. There's not really like a lot of pictures, which Nami typically doesn't include pictures in most of her live tours, so that wasn't really surprising. But this was definitely a good tour, guys. If you never checked it out, I would recommend it. It's only like an hour and 50 minutes long, and her first anniversary, I think, was like an hour and 40 minutes, I think. So again, guys, this tour I thought was really good and definitely brought something different to the table. So definitely a, a good view into a different look at Nami A and again, looking at her roots and where she came from. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I have a lot more that's upcoming. It's just been taking me a while to get all the videos edited because I have like too many. And I also have these, some side projects that I'm working on that I hope to be posting sometime this year. They're just taking me a lot longer than I thought between work and trying to do my album reviews as well. So please be patient with me on that. But thank you guys again, and I will see you next time.